important because this is a kind of unprecedented rim pack in that I think it may be the first one where both Russia and China are not invited and simply because it's more or less going to become um, an enactment of the next world war. So I'd like to tell a story about something that happened to me recently. It had been years since I had been on Oahu, but last June on the 20th, 2022, I was on the island for medical reasons, so I managed to find the time to make it to two events. One was the Hawaii Congressional Town Hall meeting about the Red Hill fuel contamination disaster, and the other was a sign holding at the base gate of Pacific Command at Pearl Harbor. My sign read, no more delays, clean up Red Hill now. I have to admit the experience of being on Oahu was chilling because it is here on Oahu or it is there on Oahu that toxic decisions are made that impact our beautiful Pacific for generations. You see it all around you on Oahu. Just even here, just pause. Look behind the edifices. Adjust your eyes to the shadows. Read between the lines. This is how we glean clues on the classified plans now underway for war with China. They are affecting us all. Kai Kaheli and Ed Case tell us that the Red Hill tanks cannot be drained until the end of 2024, at the earliest. Kaheli pointed out a provision in the 2023 National Defense Author Authorization Act that says that the drainage depends upon the military's ability to provide fuel for war by alternative means. In other words, the purity of our drinking water is not as important as what the Pentagon decides is their assessment of their war fighting capabilities. Right now, two alternative fuel storage facilities are being built. One of them is on Larakia land in northern Australia, and the other is on Tinian, one of the lovely northern Mariana Islands. Needless to say, at the town hall meeting, neither Kaheli nor Case mentioned the construction of alternative fuel tanks, mentioned that they were taking place in the face of local opposition overseas, nor the grievous cultural and environmental impacts from doing so, nor the fact that during any conflict, it is the fuel storage facility that is targeted by the enemy, first and foremost, sending billows of black smoke for days into the sky. We saw that with Ukraine early in the war. What kind of barbarians would impose this on, on other people? So is this the real reason that it's taking so long to drain the tanks? They're awaiting the completion of the Larakia and Tinian facilities? Or are they secretly building underground fuel tanks somewhere that's classified so that China won't know where to bomb? In 2015, I visited Tinian and I met Serafina King Neighbors, an indigenous Chamorro elder. Tinian, if you don't know, was the island that the U.S. bombers took off from in order to drop atomic bombs on Japan. Serafina said sorrowfully during our interview again and again, who wants their home island to be the place responsible for so much misery and suffering? And then upon reflection, she added, you cannot find peace with bombs. We sit down and we negotiate, we talk. We argue and we argue and we argue, and then we come to a solution, simple. So no matter how naive that might sound, the simple solution of talk story has been the message of every spiritual teaching throughout humanity 
history. No reason for it to be any different now. So back at Pearl Harbor, I was holding my sign. I joined fellow water protectors there. Janice and Anne were their names, and their ancestors hailed from Okinawa. They, they were born and raised on Oahu. Now, on the other side of the highway from where we held our signs, I could see a takugi. That's the Korean flag with the yin-yang symbol. And it was attached to a pole that rose from behind fences and concrete structures. At first I thought, oh, it must be an embassy, a consulate, or, or maybe a Korean restaurant. And then I saw this shimmer of water in the distance, and I realized I was on the banks of the uterus-shaped Pearl Harbor. And then it became clear the takugi was attached to a warship docked at the harbor. It was mostly eclipsed by buildings, but I could see the steel radar equipment peeking up from behind. Oh, it was the Marado, the gigantic amphibious assault ship, Korea's largest warship, as large, to, as, large as an aircraft carrier, but even more treacherous, if you can imagine such a thing, because when a vessel that gargantuan plows into a reef, crushing everything in its path, and lumbers onto shore to release battalions of troops and robots, tanks and weapons. It is simply stomach turning. It must be here for the rim of the Pacific, scourge or rim pack. Tens of thousands of military personnel, ships, submarines, and aircraft from 26 other countries are here in Hawaii right now. They got here June 29th, and they leave August 4th. What are they doing here? Well, they are enacting the next war against China. Like some diabolical cosplay using Hawaiian lands, waters, heavens, kekai, kaina, nalani. They are sinking ships. They are blasting torpedoes. They are dropping bombs. They are launching missiles. They are activating whale killing sonar. They are wreaking havoc on the well-being of our ocean hobbling its capacity as the single most important mitigating force to climate catastrophe. Kekai Kaina Nalani. I thought of the Marado, birthed at the recently constructed Navy base on Jeju Island, just last month in Korea. That base was built on what was once sacred Gorombi, which is a Kona-style spillage of magma that has hardened into one of the world's few rocky freshwater wetlands, bubbling with pure springs that you, they used to drink, home to 86 species of seaweeds and over 500 species of shellfish, many of which were endangered now paved over with, over with concrete. I thought of the Marado conducting, as the Pentagon puts it, quote, amphibious exercises by forcible entry, end quote. That's one of their maneuvers. Amphibious exercises by forcible entry at Kaneohe Bay in Oahu. I thought of the Marado ravaging Chulu Bay on Tinian, where in 2016 environmentalists forced the cancellation of a valiant shield war maneuver because it coincided with the nesting of endangered turtles. When I visited Chulu Bay, it reminded me very much of Anini Beach on Kauai, except that unlike Anini, it was truly wild, biodiverse, and without multi-million dollar beachfront homes. No one would allow such a thing on Anini Beach where the celebrities live. But because Chulu is invisible, which also is why it has continued to be so kaleidoscopically wild, 
It and so much of the Pacific have become fair game for unbridled military exercises and ecocide. A weaponized Pacific is a dead Pacific, and a dead Pacific is a dead planet. Thank you.